Welcome to Counters. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the margin of safety value. In our previous lessons, we looked at the margin of safety percentage and the margin of safety unit. So if you'd like to check them out together with other cost volume profit analysis examples, you'll find them in the links in the description below. So what is the margin of safety value? Well, this is the amount of sales that exceeds the break-even value or the value of sales a company can afford to lose on before it stops being profitable. The higher the margin of safety value, the better it is for the company because there is a greater gap between the profit and the break-even point. So when we are looking at the margin of safety value, we're actually looking at the rand amount or the dollar amount. That is why it's called value. So it's not the units and it's not the percentage. So we want to see how much in profits the company has made in essence. And what is the formula for calculating the margin of safety value? Well, here it is. It's the actual or estimated sales value minus break-even sales. And that will give you your margin of safety value. So it's the difference between the actual or estimated sales value and the break-even sales or break-even value. Another way you can do this is by taking the margin of safety units and multiplying it by the selling price per unit. So if you have the margin of safety units, you just multiply that by the selling price per unit. Now let's go through an example in calculating the margin of safety value. Here's an example. We are given the details in the production department of Max PLC and they are estimated annual sales 6,000 units at 160 rand each. We are given direct labor, direct material, factory overheads which are all fixed and administrative expenses which are also all fixed. We are asked to calculate the margin of safety value. So how do we go about doing that? Well, let's bring up our formula once again. It's the actual or estimated sales value minus the break-even sales. Now the actual or estimated sales value will usually be given that one. And if you are, you're just going to take the number of units multiplied by the selling price per unit. You can see the very first line item is estimated annual sales. So it's estimated that we will sell 6,000 units at 160 rand each. So if we multiply the two together, we should get our estimated sales value. And there is our formula for the estimated sales value. Estimated sales units, which is 6,000 times the selling price per unit, which is 160 rand. And it gives us an amount of 960,000 rand. Now that we have the estimated sales value, we need to calculate the break-even sales. Now, how do you calculate the break-even sales? Well, we've done another lesson specifically on that one where we looked at this very same example and calculated it. But here is how you go about doing that. You take the fixed cost that you have and you divide that by the contribution margin ratio. And if you see here, we already have our fixed costs. It's our factory overheads and our administrative expenses, which we are told they are all fixed. So it's the 80,000 plus the 55,000 rand that make up our fixed cost. What about our contribution margin ratio? Well, we have to calculate our contribution margin ratio. So how do we go about doing that? We'll take our contribution and divide that by sales and it will give us our contribution margin ratio. And then we can calculate our break-even sales. Another way you can do this is by taking the fixed cost divided by contribution and then you multiply that answer by the selling price per unit to get your break-even sales. So let's calculate our contribution margin ratio. Let's calculate firstly our contribution. That will be sales minus variable costs. So our sales is the 160 rand and our variable cost is the direct material and the direct labor. So let's put down our sales, 160 rand and our variable cost is the 45 rand plus the 90 rand gives us 135 rand, which are for direct material and direct labor costs. And then now that we have our sales and our variable cost, we just need to take the sales of 160 rand minus the 135 rand for variable cost, and it will give us a contribution of 25 rand. Now that we have our contribution of 25 rand, let's calculate our contribution margin ratio. It's our contribution divided by the sales. So it's the 25 rand divided by 160 rand, and it will give us an answer of 15.63% or in decimals, 0 0.1563. If you multiply that by 100, it's gonna give you 15.63. Now that we have that answer, we have our fixed cost, which is the 80,000 rand for factory overheads and 55,000 rand for administrative expenses. 
and we have our contribution margin ratio of 15.63%, we can get our break-even sales, which is 864,000 Rand, as you can see down here. Now that we have our break-even sales, we have our estimated sales value, we can get our margin of safety value. So let's take the 960 Rand for the estimated sales value minus the 864 Rand for the break-even sales and it gives us an amount of 96,000 Rand. So what does this mean? What does the margin of safety value mean? So in this case, we have 96,000 Rand. That means the company is able to make a profit of 96,000 Rand. But the fact that it's the margin of safety means that if the sales of the company are to fall by 96,000 Rand or by more than 96,000 Rand, it will start being unprofitable. So the greater the margin of safety value is, and that is what we mentioned earlier on, then the better it is for the company because the company is able to deal with fluctuations in sales. But the smaller it is, the less able the company is to deal with fluctuations in sales. That also indicates business risk because the smaller it is, the more risks the company has in incurring losses. So it needs to pay attention to that in setting its prices, bearing in mind also how the customer will respond to the price and in reducing the costs it incurs in producing the units that it's selling. That is how it can go about increasing the margin of safety value. I hope it has made sense. I hope you've gained value from this lesson. And if you have, consider subscribing to our channel, like this video, and share it to those you think it might help. Till next time, cheers.